morning YouTube hope y'all are well as you can see we are out here in this beautiful park here in upstate New York this park specifically is called Moss Lake and it's a spot that I've come to a number of times in the past to do photography and that's exactly what we're doing this morning as well as you can see behind me I got the tripod set up over here and I've been snapping a couple of photos of these trees just because they're beginning to start to change color a little bit because springtime is rolling around everything else is really really muted with the exception of these couple of trees they're kind of this like yellowish green hue and then everything around it is really just brown and red and really dull and so there's a really cool contrast going on between these trees and I've been snapping a couple of photos all morning. So the first photo that I took was over there actually and it was a little bit of a reflection shot of one of the trees kind of reflecting off of the water. One of the really cool things about this lake is that it's super, super calm. There's like nothing going on up here. There's no boats ever on it. There's no boats actually allowed on this lake. And it's in between all of these trees so the wind doesn't really touch it at all meaning that there's no ripples in the water whatsoever and it's perfect for reflections so the second composition that i took was this one that you can see right behind me there's kind of this fallen over tree that acts as a really nice leading line up into this tree right back here that's right up against the forest so i tried to focus on the tree in the foreground and then actually this tree is so close to me and the other one is so far away that there was a lot of bokeh in that shot meaning that the tree in the background was really blurred out while the one in the foreground was really sharp i actually used a polarizer on my lens in order to really pull out the vibrance of all of those trees and of the red in this foreground kind of moss stuff this lake is actually called moss lake and so this is all moss over top of the lake if you were to step on this you'd actually fall straight through it and that's why i'm on this wooden walkway right here which is really convenient <laughs> for photography um, but I'm super happy with that shot I think it actually came out really really nice if you're familiar with the photographer Thomas Heaton <laughs> I watch a lot of his videos and this is kind of a shot that I feel like he would take it's like the way that he sees things he frames up trees really nicely and things of that nature and uh it's a nice shot. I'm a big fan of that one. Today I'm actually changing it up a little bit gear wise. So if you watched my video a couple weeks back, you know that I sold my Canon 50 millimeter F1.2 and I didn't actually just straight up sell it. I sold it, but also traded it for this thing right here. It's the Canon 24 to 105 millimeter F4 L lens for the RF mount. And this thing, I'm pretty sure is kind of a little bit of a beast. This is actually my first time getting it out. I've watched a lot of review videos. I've looked at like the test charts and things like that. And this thing, as far as I can tell, is extremely versatile and extremely, extremely sharp. So if you know what my setup is, if you've been watching the videos for a long time, you know that I've been shooting with a 15 to 35 millimeter and a 50 millimeter for the longest time now. And I don't really have anything that's into the telephoto range, which is kind of something that I've missed over the past couple of months. I used to shoot quite a bit of telephoto, but not really anymore. But now going to be able to because I have this extremely versatile zoom lens with a 24 to 105 millimeter. So both of those shots that I just took were taken past 50 millimeters, which was the furthest focal length that I previously had. And so I'm really trying to take advantage of the telephoto side of this lens. But today I want to kind of go around, shoot. I'm actually doing like a three or four day long camping trip right now. I'm going to be shooting the whole way with a 24 to 105 millimeter. So follow along and let's do a little bit of a real world review today let's get into it outside so I jumped here into the camper in order to enjoy my coffee and warm up a little bit check this thing out so I got the mr. buddy heater cranking away and because this thing is so small in here the mr. buddy heats it up like instantaneously it's already super toasty in here I could probably take this off and I'll be super comfortable but super super clutch one of my favorite things about this trailer is its ability to turn into a couch on the interior. I've posted a number of videos giving a tour 
of this trailer, and so I'll post one of them up here in the corner if you're interested in seeing it. But let's talk about the reasons why I got this lens right here, the 24 to 105. The first reason why I got this lens is because of its versatility. This lens goes from 24 millimeters on the wide end all the way to 105 millimeters on the long end. 24 millimeters is a relatively wide angle. So my wide angle is a 15 to 35 millimeter and 24 lands right about in the middle of that ultra wide angle lens. And then on the long end, 105 millimeters, that is considered a short telephoto focal length. So anything portrait wise or any landscapes where you wanna get a little bit of compression, this is gonna give you the ability to do that, which is really, really awesome. And I also say it's versatile because it's so small. I mean, they pack so much capability into such a small um, footprint and it's awesome. I'm a big fan of this lens. And say if I was going on like a really, really long hike or something like that, if I was doing, for example, this past summer I did, I think it was a 12 mile hike in Yosemite National Park. And I brought like five different lenses with me, two cameras, my bag was ridiculously heavy. This is the type of lens that if I was in hindsight to do it again, I would just throw my EOS R in there with a lens like this. And because it's so versatile, it would give, the, give me the ability on the wide end to do all of my vlogging and things of that nature, but then also do all the photography that I would wanna do because this focal length literally has everything that I need. Yes, in some instances, it is nicer to get a little bit wider than 24 millimeters. And yes, it's nicer to get a little bit tighter than 105 on occasion but if you're really trying to pack light and you're really trying to be minimalistic this is extremely versatile and is going to get the job done for you the second reason why i got this lens is because of its amazing image stabilization so that second photo that i showed you guys earlier i took at 70 millimeters which is a relatively short telephoto focal length and i took it at 1 15th of a second handheld. I would have taken it on my tripod, but the angle of view I wanted was a couple of inches taller than my tripod is, so I had to do it handheld. And shooting it at 1 15th of a second, handheld at 70 millimeters, as far as I can tell on the back of the screen on my camera, zooming all the way in, it is rock solid razor sharp. And I barely had to try. I mean, my hands are pretty stable, but I wasn't really holding my breath super hard or doing anything to stabilize the camera. It was literally just handheld. I think I was holding it in one hand and I took a couple shots and I know that at least a couple of them were completely razor sharp. And so oftentimes I will do landscape photography on a tripod or actually the majority of the time I'll do landscape photography on a tripod. But in some instances where you do need to have a slower shutter speed and you have to do it handheld, the image stabilization on this lens is fantastic and it's gonna get the job done for you. The third reason why I got this lens is because of its sharpness. If you follow Canon's lenses at all, you know that they've had a couple different variations of the 24 to 105 millimeter lens. The previous two variations were for the Canon EF mount, whereas this is for the Canon RF mount. Those two lenses for the EF mount were legendary lenses. People loved them. It was the kit lens that came with a number of professional DSLRs for a long time, and they were extremely sharp awesome lenses. But if you look at any comparison videos or comparison blogs or anything like that on the internet, you can see that Canon actually significantly improved upon the lens with this copy of it. This is much sharper throughout the focal range. It's actually a little bit smaller. And finally, the stabilization is actually better than it has been on past lenses. So all those things kind of working together, the fact that the lens, the glass itself is sharper, but also the image stabilization is better is gonna result in much sharper images more consistently for you. This is an extremely sharp lens and because of its versatility and being able to get razor solid or razor sharp images at all these different focal lengths, it's an awesome lens. I'm a huge fan of this lens and because of its versatility, its stabilization and its sharpness, I'm gonna be using this a lot for landscapes moving forward. I've made it to our next location. I'm currently at Letchworth State Park, which is one of my favorite spots here in upstate New York to photograph. Been here a number of times in the past videos. You've probably seen it if you've been following the channel for some time now, but I'm set up right here on top of this cool bridge that overlooks the river. And you can't really see it because this lens is really wide angle, 
but there's a waterfall that's all the way down there. And so I was able to zoom in to 105 millimeters here and I took a vertical shot using a four stop ND filter and a polarizer. And I think it looks okay. However, I know that the conditions this time of year are not perfect for photography at all. I mean, there's a number of trees that have not grown their leaves back and they're kind of just acting as distractions in the frame. However, as the year progresses, I think that some of these trees, particularly the one that you see in the bottom right hand corner here, will actually complement the frame. I think that they'll add cool features to the image. Like it, once that grows back some green leaves or maybe as fall comes into, into play and those leaves start turning orange and things of that nature, I think that that tree in particular will look really cool. And then especially in the background where it's just brown and really dull right now, as trees or as leaves start to grow back onto those trees, I think that this image is gonna really start to look a lot better. And so I'm kind of treating this location right here as just kind of like a scouting trip and also just to test out this new lens. Um, but I'm definitely gonna come back to this exact same spot as the year progresses and get this image in better conditions. So something kind of funny just happened. I was driving on my way to find a spot to cook some lunch because I'm starving right now. And I decided to pull off at this point called Inspiration Point. And I wasn't really planning on taking a photo just because I've been here 10 million times and I know that it doesn't really look that great this time of year and the lighting's not so good. But I pulled up and I heard like motors going and it almost sounded like a helicopter was overhead. But then I saw these guys like paragliding. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's when they have a parachute attached to them and then a fan attached to their back. And there was like 10 of them flying all over the valley. I have some footage, so I'll play it for you. And it was crazy. I didn't even have my camera on me, so I literally saw them and I sprinted back to my car, grabbed my camera, and it actually turned out that the 24 to 105 millimeter was the perfect focal length. Actually, 105 millimeters exactly was the perfect focal length to get like the waterfall in the foreground, the train tracks in the background, as you'll see right here, and then one of the paragliders above the train tracks. And so, certainly not an award winning image, but it just goes to show the versatility of this lens. So the last spot that we went to is a spot called Upper Falls. And it's a really, really cool spot. It's arguably one of my favorite spots in the park to go to. But over the past several years that I've been trying to photograph it, I've never had good luck in terms of getting good conditions there. Every single time that I go, it's either like midday, super bright or way too overcast, or maybe it's the middle of the winter and it's like right after a whole bunch of snow melted and so it's not really frozen and it's just kind of muddy and crappy looking. I've had a ton of difficulty getting good photos at that spot specifically. Today was kind of a similar instance where the conditions weren't ideal. However, I think I kind of made it work to a certain degree. I used a 10 stop ND filter as well as a polarizer and I was able to take a little bit of the glare out of the water. And with that 10 stop ND filter, I was able to do a 30 second long exposure. And so there were kind of these like white bubbles and stuff like that running down the water. And with the elongated exposure, it created these really cool lines in the water. And it was actually interesting, at one point, all of the wind was blowing the mist off to the left of the frame, but then at one point, all of the wind completely changed direction and started blowing all the mist to the right-hand side of the frame. And so it gave the image this entirely different appearance where everything was kind of like misted or fogged out. And I think that that image in particular is gonna look really good in a black and white. Anyways, guys, I think that today turned out to be a pretty solid day. Some hits, some misses, but overall, I think it was a really good day to test out that new lens, the 24 to 105. I'm super happy with it. I took a bunch of shots, both at the wide angle and also at the telephoto end. The majority of them were long exposures on a tripod, but we did test the stabilization with that one shot this morning. Here's all the photos that I took today. I'm super happy with all those this morning. The, the photos from this morning, I'm really excited to take a look at those in particular, just because... I really like that park and I really think that the contrast between the greenish yellow trees and like the red moss in the foreground, I think it's going to be cool once I put it into Lightroom and get a little bit of an edit on it. I'm excited about those ones. A lot of the ones here at Letchworth were kind of duds as I was talking about earlier. However, I think that that last photo that I just took is going to look good in black and white. And so I'm excited to edit that one and uh, that one hopefully will come out cool. But guys, I appreciate you watching as always. I'm gonna continue this camping trip. I think I'm gonna head further east in New York State, potentially camp out in Ithaca maybe. I might head up into the Adirondacks to be honest. 
I have to leave in about 10 minutes and I still don't know where I'm going. So we're going to figure it out. If you want to see more of my adventures, more of these photography trips and ideally better photos as the summer progresses and we actually get some leaves on the trees and some better conditions, definitely hit that subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. It helps out with the algorithm. It helps more people to see the video and I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up big time. Thank you guys so much and I'll plan on seeing you in my next video. Peace. Thank you.